Anthony Freeze is a creator of many kinds. He has a very successful local podcast YouTube show called the 24 Hour Hustle Show that I've been watching for basically all 52 episodes. I really wanted to bring him on the show as he makes a transition back into making movies to talk about what his strategies are for building a platform that brings an audience to the movies that he's making. Because I think he has an interesting perspective and I think he has an interesting way that he's going about doing that. And he's also going to talk about bringing guests onto the show for his podcast, how he did that, and also kind of what he's learned from a year of doing an episode more or less every single week. Movies in the Black is a podcast show about making movies that make money. Overall, the goal is to introduce you to more interesting creators, especially uh, around the topic of making money and business of filmmaking and other related art forms. I think there's a lot we can learn from these people, regardless of whether or not they are currently making a living making films. The idea is that we can all learn from each other and make progress towards that goal that so many of us have. So welcome to the show, and let's welcome Anthony. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you on. on. Uh, I've listened to so many of your podcast episodes that I'm interested to hear how that has gone, and also to get into the next stages of what you're into. Absolutely. Definitely looking forward to get into it for sure. Real quick, do you want to give a little overview of who you are, what you've been doing, and uh, what you're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Anthony Freeze. I am overall a creator. Uh, I don't like to dub myself as multiple different things. So if I were to say one thing, I would just say overall, I'm a creator. So I'm a host of the 24-Hour Hustle Show, which is a video podcast on YouTube, Facebook, it's also on iTunes, it's on Stitcher, it's primarily on Anchor, so it pretty much distributes it all across those different audio platforms as far as podcasts go. And I also run a business called 24 Hour Media, which is now kind of reforming and reshaping, which I've been doing for about a year now, um, pretty much talking about film, TV, and, and entertainment, as well as entrepreneurship but now moving in more towards the creative of film, television, and entertainment, because as you know, we both went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh for digital film and video production. So that's always been a passion in our mind. So in the year 2019, I'm excited to get back into that world and actually start creating some more things and reviewing film and talking about film and having discussions around different movies that are coming out as well as TV shows. And then also just covering some things in entertainment as well. So now um, in that first year of doing 24 hour media, I covered entrepreneurship. Now I'm moving more towards the film, television and entertainment. I think that's exciting. I, I think it's funny because we both kind of got out of actually making movies around the same time and are both getting back into it at the same time. I know it's something in the air. It's definitely, uh, I just can't, I have that itch now and I can't let go of it. Right. I'm a, And I'm a firm believer in nothing happens by coincidence. So there's definitely a, a purpose for this. I feel like for sure. We may not know what it is yet, but something may come out of it. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I've really enjoyed your show, the 24 hour, what, what, what did you just call it? The 24 hour hustle show or what is it? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Do you actually... Let's just clear this up. You don't actually hustle for 24 hours. You do sleep, right? Absolutely. So the, the, <laughs> the, the, the it's funny. So the, the name of the show, so no, it does not mean literally hustling for 24 hours in the day. I mean, that's not possible. Um, the reason why I call it that is because the number one excuse most people have for not pursuing their passion is they claim that they don't have enough time in the day. But there are some people that out there that, may what have you may have kids they may be working two jobs they may have been homeless at one point in time and somehow some way they've been able to shape and create the life that they've always wanted and pursue the goals and dreams that they had in mind and still was able to accomplish that with the same exact yeah, with all of the same 24 hours exactly so so Come the in. point is so the point is we all have the same 24 hours in the day depending on how your day is shaped and formed 
it, it, it all depends on your time management. If you're working during the uh, working during the day, great, no big deal. What are you doing at night? Or if you're working at night, what are you doing in the morning time? If you got kids, how are you managing your time to be effective to do the things that you truly want to pursue? So, no, it doesn't mean you know <laughs> actually literally hustling for 24 hours a day. It just means that we all have 24 hours a day to be able to get these things done. Yeah, I think that there's definitely there's a really great just really simple quote that I always hear that gets to the bone of that or the core of that is you don't, you'll never have enough time for anything. You have to make time. Absolutely. Because we've already, by the time you're even 18 years old, you filled all 24 of your hours with sleep, eating, hanging out with your friends, playing video games, going to work, going to school. So you never all of a sudden get new time it's never going to happen. You have to decide, okay, I'm not going to do this thing and I'm going to do this thing instead. Like I gave up video games a long time ago and that was the most productive thing I've ever done. Um, and I've also pulled back on the amount of time that I spend hanging out with friends uh, or like socializing. I've recently gotten back into allowing myself to do that a little bit because I think it matters to just like be a human and like, uh, honestly, it's good for networking too. I've, I've found now allowing myself a few nights a week to go, I don't drink, but I go hang out and spend time with people. It has expanded my network rapidly because you're getting to know people on just a person to person basis rather than just always work, always serious. Like you don't want to be that person either. Right. Absolutely. And, and also to your point, I mean, as far as association goes, that's one of the biggest influences in our lives as far as our mindset goes. And a lot of these different things that I do also talk about on the show, as far as like association, mindset, attitude, business and entrepreneurship and things like that. A lot of these different things affect the direction that we go. And so if you're associating with the wrong kind of crowd um, that, you know, also feels like they don't have enough time, then you're going to start to feel like that too. So you got to associate yeah. yourself with people that are, in life where you want to be that are finding ways to maximize their time and how to get things done. Do you know who it was that quoted that said you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? I don't know the source of who said that quote. I but don't either, I, I, I say it all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like we've all seen that quote on like Instagram or something like that from some random motivational account and, uh, and, and it doesn't have who said that quote, but that quote is is true. Like that's that's on, on spot on. Yeah, absolutely. So, after doing the twenty four hour hustle show for you've done it for a year now, right? Just a little bit over a year. Yep, uh, uh, fifty two episodes. Is that every week, or was that what was the the uh, frequency on that? So the very first episode came out in two thousand seventeen. So last year, September twenty second is when the very first episode aired, and the idea was to have the show come out every single week. And for the most part, it did come out every single week. The only time I took a break was actually around this time in December because I wanted to spend time with family and, and the important things. And also had my video uh, guy who's a friend of mine, his name is Robert Waters, who helped me along with the show. And he also has a family and kids and things like that. So we both decided to take a break. And then 2018, we would hit the ground running and we would start releasing these episodes week by week by week. And for the most part, that has gone fantastically well. Had at least 24, I mean, um, 25 episodes in a row, took a little week break and then been releasing episodes ever since then. And then we just had episode 52 around the beginning week of November. And I've been taking a little break since then because my whole goal was to at least get 52 episodes, which is pretty much 52 weeks in a year, um, to be able to, to reach that goal and then decide what I want to do from there. So since I hit 52, I decided that I still am going to continue to do the show. It's just not going to be on a weekly basis. So at this point, it'll probably just be here and there. Whenever I bring on guests, they're going to be top-notch people that you'll be able to learn about and find out more information about them. And I'm going to be working more on the film and television and entertainment portion of uh, 24 Hour Media. So in that whole year, is there 
kind of a what 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 what's your main takeaway from all of the people that you interviewed? Is there a couple things that you took away that you learned from those people? Absolutely. So my main takeaway, number one, is the relationships that I was able to create and also the the connections that I've been able to make through doing this video podcast. It's absolutely been amazing. A lot of these people that I have gotten the opportunity to sit down with, I might not have had the opportunity to sit down with had I not done the show. Because a lot of these people that I did get the opportunity to sit down with are very busy people. They are very productive. Some of them are running very successful businesses, some even national businesses. And to be able to have even just a few minutes of the time to sit down with them and also have it recorded and documented for not only me to be able to learn things, but also to expose this information to other people to be able to learn as well has been absolutely phenomenal. So getting to be able to get an opportunity to sit down and connect with a lot of these people has been probably the best takeaway uh, to be able to learn from them and also be able to share that information with other people that, that engage with it. And I've also been able to share good feedback with me. Yeah, that's been one of the, that, I mean, you doing that was kind of, honestly, the inspiration for me to start my own show. Uh, I mean, it kind of, I had already thought about it a little bit and then that was like, okay, I got to do this. Like, um, and already it's crazy. I reached out to, and I'm, I'm going to ask you this about your process of finding guests, but I started reaching out to people. I reached out to my first, first day I did one. Um, and I knew who I was going to do for that one. That, so that was easy. And then I said, I'm going to reach out to 20 different producers, filmmakers, people in that creative space. And maybe I'll get like five and I'll be really happy because they were people, a lot of the people that I was reaching out to were kind of stretches. Um, and basically everyone said yes. <laughs> so then I've been like, oh crap, now i got to schedule all these people. Um, which was pretty awesome because I mean, some of these people are people that I would never get a chance to talk to and connect with otherwise. And now I'm going to get a half hour of their time to, you know, really connect with them and learn about them and then share whatever their message and information is. Um, and a lot of them are producers, so they don't get a lot of chance to, I guess, share their side of the story for the films that they've worked on and the things that they've done, because everyone wants to know about the directors and the actors, but I'm really interested in the producing side, so that is a cool thing. A lot of it's going to happen at, at the beginning of the year, because like you said, kind of around the holidays, no one really uh, wants to do a lot of stuff, and I understand that. I'm not trying to like force people to be on an interview around Christmas time, except for you. I <laughs> all <laughs> did. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, there's people like you that I have been just really impressed with what you've been doing and uh, just wanted to reconnect because we've worked on so much stuff before. Um, so what what was your process like to get guests on your show? Uh, if someone is interested in doing something like that, how do they even start and go about doing that? So a lot of the people that I've had on the show are people that I was in, that I was genuinely interested in from the start. So in the beginning, it was actually a little bit of a challenge to get people to come on to the show because number one, I didn't have anything to reference to say, Hey, this is what I've done before as far as a video podcast or a show and to say, Hey, this is what it's going to, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like to be able to show them, Hey, this is what it's going to be about. But um, once I, I initially got at least the first 10 people the ball started rolling. So the way I initially reached out, I would say for the first 10 people that I was interested in, I would just simply just send them a message on Facebook. Like for example, the very first person I had on the show, his name was David Allen. He was the very first episode that I had. And he was someone that I actually followed on Facebook for quite some time. And he actually owns his own customized suit company. And he's worked with clients like the WWE, which I'm a huge fan of, a huge wrestling fan. So that automatically was something I was interested in. Uh, he also has worked with some people, customized suits for the NFL and also ESPN. And just a lot of different celebrities and actors that have done series on Netflix and movies and stuff like that. So he's really building up a, a huge national business and uh, somebody that's extremely busy and highly productive. And when I reached out to him on Facebook, I just simply said, hey, I, I really admire your work. I really love the things that you're doing. I'm actually coming out with a show pretty soon called the 24-Hour Hustle Show. 
And I really would love to promote the work that you're doing on my show to a whole new audience. And hopefully it would maybe help you business wise a little bit. And I would just really love to pick your brain on how you've been able to build this. Can I treat you to a cup of coffee one day and uh, sit down with you? And he said, wow, you know, uh, you know, uh, the gist of it pretty much was, yeah, I, I would love to sit down with you. Uh, so eventually we sat down for a cup of coffee. We chatted. We had a chance to pick his brain a little bit. And we sat up a time to uh, actually record the show, which we actually do over at Studio Me and East Liberty. And we got a chance to sit down and record the episode. And he was one of the first ones. And I've pretty much gone through that process with the first 10 people and pretty much everybody that's been on the show, I just would reach out to somebody that I felt like I was genuinely interested in. I would just tell them, you know, Hey, I really admire your work. I would love to promote what you do on the show. Would that be a benefit to you? And also can I treat you to a cup of coffee sometime? And nine times out of 10, most of the people would say yes. Um, because I mean, it's a, a it's a win-win situation for everyone. I'm going to promote your work on the show. I get a chance to learn about you. And also, whenever the guest promotes their episode on their platform, I also get exposed to a whole new network of people as well that may be interested in what I'm doing. So it's just been uh, an amazing experience to be able to get a lot of these people on. And pretty much after that, it really started to snowball because a lot of people would start to recommend people that I didn't even know was on my radar and people would suggest this person and that person, or have you heard of them and what they're doing? And I, and I didn't at that point in time, and I would connect with them and sit down with them over a cup of coffee and just be amazed by what this person may be doing. And it's just been an amazing experience and just the process of being able to get these guests on the show has definitely been experience that I'm going to use in the future as well. Yeah, I think that, I mean, and you can, you can transfer that into, uh, your filmmaking networking too. It's interesting because I mean, as a, as a producer, and I don't know how much you're interested in the producing side of filmmaking, we can get into that a little bit, but, uh, it, having a network of people, whether they're related to filmmaking or not is kind of the most important part of it. Um, and also just, I, I love I found out about a lot of cool people and connected with people through your show. <laughs> um, but the same thing has happened to me already. I interview someone and then quickly they're like, you should interview this person too. And they kind of give me an introduction. And then it's a great way to just, cause you're instead of just saying, Hey, let's sit down for coffee and let me pick your brain. Uh, I found people don't like that phrase. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's like, let me provide at least some kind of value for it. I'm not going to pretend that I have, hundred thousand listeners and it's going to be this huge explosive thing for your business but it could be you know a little bit of something and you can use this content then on your platforms to tell your story a little bit better that's kind of something that a lot of people are interested in um yeah i think that i think having a show in general is like the new having a blog and Mm -hmm. it's definitely you got to figure out what your theme is and what your uh subject matter is but i think it's a huge benefit for anyone looking to try to a, build an audience online, but more so just build up their network. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And also to add to that, I mean, if there's somebody that you want to sit down with, you know, saying that you want to pick their brain and just go over a cup of coffee, that may not go as well, especially if they're super busy. But if you have your own podcast or video podcast and you're going to show it to an audience, at that point, you're adding value to that person now. And that gives them a little right. bit more yeah that gives them a little bit more incentive and be more inclined to say yes. And I feel like that's what has happened for me because like I said, a lot of these people are very busy, but now if I, if I add value to them and let them know that I have a network of people that may be interested in what you're doing and you can also connect with them that at that point makes their time worthwhile to be able to do the show. Um, And it's just been something that I've learned that if you do it that way, it makes their time a little bit more valuable. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to get into a little bit of what you're what you're moving into now. Um, I'm interested to hear what your it, do you have goals as far as exactly what you're trying to do with filmmaking now in 2019, or are you just kind of deciding that you're going to get back into that? So I definitely want to work on a script for a short film and enter it into a film festival. Maybe see how it does. And if it does well, I may make a longer version of that short 
depending on what happens. So I, I'll probably cross that bridge once I get there. But that's the goal as far as right now. So, um, and also in addition to that, just in building 24-hour media, I would love it to be sort of this publication slash form where creators and filmmakers and just fans of movies can just have discussions about their favorite movies, have them be reviewed, and also be able to talk about them. So right now, as far as my 24-hour media website, I am making a obviously a film, television, and entertainment section. So for example, in the film section, there'll be movie reviews in there. There'll be top tens. There'll be, you know, maybe the best movies in drama this year or horror and or what have you. And same and similar thing in the television section as well, reviewing maybe the best upcoming or anticipated Netflix shows or things to look forward to in 2019 or television shows that's coming out that you may not expect to be good that you may want to check out. So different things like that. And then also in the entertainment portion, maybe going over some box office numbers and things like that. So I want to be able to create this website that's kind of the hub of cultural film, television, and entertainment where not only myself and I writing reviews and things like that, but maybe potentially other people that may see a film that, I may not necessarily engage with, but someone else may be super excited about it where I can have people that want to contribute to the website as maybe a writer or an editor. They can also submit their own review on a movie that they may be excited about and I'll post it on the website. Same thing with the television portion as well. If somebody was excited about a show or something like that, that I might not have been able to see, they can also write an article about it and I can post it up on my website. So that's something I'm working on as well to be able to collaborate with more people as well. I know I have at least two people that are interested in doing that because I know for me, I'm not going to be able to see everything that comes out in the movie theater. I'm not going to oh, be able to see. come on. <laughs> That's what you got 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not going to be able to see every single television yeah. show or um, report on every single thing that comes out in the news. So being able to collaborate with other people that, you know, like these things as well can also be able to contribute as well. So I'm also working on, you know, payment as far as these people that contribute and things like that. So building up this business in this platform and this community for it. I think that's a really smart, and I don't know if you're doing this on, I think you are on purpose, uh, but it's a really smart way to build an audience for your own projects too. And also then have that audience to help other filmmakers that you're interested in and stuff. Um, I've told a lot of people, and I'm too lazy to do that. <laughs> I don't watch enough stuff, honestly. Uh, but a strategy that I've seen working in, especially the music area, and I, I haven't seen anyone really apply it very well in the filmmaking arena, um, is to do that, is to curate content or create content that's geared towards your audience. I think a lot of filmmakers make the mistake of producing content that's for other filmmakers. How did we make this film? All this behind the scenes stuff. How do you like, what camera should you use? All this stuff, which is all well and good, but it doesn't, that's not the audience that you need for your film. The people that you need for your film are the people that love movies. They love TV, you know, the actual audience of these things, not necessarily the makers of them. But I think that's a huge opportunity for you to be able to connect with the potential audience of future projects you'll work on. And I mean, obviously that's kind of a big business too in and of itself, just reviewing and curating all of the crazy amount of content that is out there for viewers. Right. Absolutely. And the way that I'm trying to build up the revenue for this is two ways. Well, actually three. So one um, is being able to build up this audience. So eventually I do come out with films of my own, which are pretty much 24 hour, media exclusives. So kind of similar to like with Amazon selling like, like when they first started, they would sell books and other people's things. But then eventually down the line, they started selling their own exclusive products. So similar yeah, to what you, Netflix. Yeah. Ex exactly. So similar to like what I'm doing, you know, it's about film and things like that, but I'm also a filmmaker. So I'm going to be able to talk about all these different things that people already know about. And eventually down the line have our own exclusive 
things that people will be able to see and come and come out with things like that. So whenever I come out with a short film or something like that, maybe have the, the DVD or Blu-ray come out that people can purchase and things like that. The other area where I'm looking to generate revenue from is also being able to do events. So for example, next year I'm actually doing a premiere for Captain Marvel and also Avengers Endgame. So last year, well, actually this year, I did the premiere for Avengers Infinity War was sold out. It was probably the greatest experience of my life. It was the best day ever. Um, I, I can definitely say that. I, I Nothing tops that day for me. And I want to be able to do more of that. So next year, I'm going to be doing that as well. So being able to put on this event and host the premiere, I have been able to generate some income from that as well. And then can also... You, the, go ahead. Can you explain to me what you mean by... like how I saw you promoting that, um, but I didn't really understand what what... How how is it that you organize that, and what can you explain what those events are? Yeah, so pretty much just doing a premiere for a movie. So for example, so for so for this one, I didn't make any revenue off that one personally. Um, this one was pretty much to raise money for the Sister Fibrosis Foundation. So what I did was whenever Avengers Infinity War came out, it came out April twenty seventh of this year, two thousand eighteen. And I did the premiere the day before, which was the 26th on a Thursday. So I hosted the premiere at a movie theater uh, at AMC, uh, the theater in the waterfront is where I hosted the premiere. And pretty much you would just find out, you would have to locate the theater that you want to host the premiere at and get in contact with the, pretty much the management there and ask if you can get permission to host the premiere there. Once you get permission for it, and you find out what the price of the theater is and things like that, at that point, you would be able to figure out how much you need to charge for your ticket prices. So once I got... So you're basically four-walling or like renting the theater and then screening the movie on your own. Is that... Right, right, right. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, they project it and everything. They take care of all the theater stuff and the movie stuff. But as far as like being yeah. able to organize it, have all the extra goodies, as far as being able to have a, maybe a premiere party beforehand, maybe at um, a restaurant or something across the street, or taking pictures or giving them premiere passes that they can wear around the, the neck and things like that. All that type of stuff costs additional money that comes out of my pocket and all the organizational type of stuff. Um, also comes out of my pocket as well. So that's kind of where the part where I kind of get paid to do, um, to be able to do the event. But for this one in particular, it was just to raise money for the like, Sister Diagnosis Foundation. So once I had all that in place, pretty much the ticket sales that I got and from the uh, ticket sales of that, we were, we were able to raise the money for that. All of that pretty much went towards the raising the money for that foundation and pretty much uh, that was the process of that. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I, I mean, so I have experienced obviously uh, four walling and screening our own movies, the movie, because we basically did that with Blood on the Leaves. And that's kind of our most profitable. We did 50 50 splits in some theaters, but that didn't really work out very well. Um, our most profitable screenings were the ones where we rented out a theater. Uh, had them project and screen our movie. We did all of the merchandise sales and kind of ran the whole event. Um, a few theaters even made us do the, the ticket sales ourselves. Some of them allowed us to do ticket sales through their box office. Um, but that was definitely, it's interesting to think about how do you go about getting, or does the theater already have that hooked up, like the, the actual the film that you're premiering since it's not your film? So they pretty much get it approved by the studio. So um, once they get it approved by the studio, I mean, it, it's already going to be getting released around the same time. Right. So it, it's as simple as them, the theater, getting it approved by the studio. And once they approve it, it's good to go. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a really awesome part of your business that you could develop more. I, I've never thought about that at all. 
but it's oh yeah like oh yeah I, i'm su- i'm super excited about it like um i've already got ticket sales for avengers endgame because i already know that one's going to sell out and i know the captain marvel one is going to be pretty exciting too because that one actually happens on i think uh women's day so that one's going to be huge as well so i'm i'm super excited about doing these premieres even more um, and then the the other thing that um, that I was going to mention as far as the third thing, as far as being able to generate revenue is being able to get sponsorship as well. So if I can get to the point where I have a big enough audience and people want to sponsor the, the website or the things that we're doing and we have a big enough audience that they want to promote their business on the website or on the videos that we put out or on the articles that we release as well that'll be another way to be able to generate revenue as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can also, uh, I don't know if you've thought about this, but other people's films, you know, they can buy advertisements and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of filmmaking sites monetize that way. Um, and I've thought about that as a advertiser, as a film, film, make, uh, film distribution and advertising side of things, you know, finding these niche sites with audiences that are into this specific type of movie and then promoting that movie independently through those sites um, and paying that site money, obviously, to do that. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think that's a really awesome uh, way for you to grow that business, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I definitely feel very confident about this. I feel like what I've done with the 24-Hour Hustle Show and seeing how that's been able to grow and develop, it's worked a lot better than – I expect it. I, I, and the way my <laughs> thoughts are, like way better, like the growth on it yeah. and the view and the people that will come on, it just worked way better than I expected. Um, and the way my thought process works, it's, it's almost 50 50 as far as creative and business wise. So I definitely have the system down. I feel like with this, with going through this first year of doing the 24 hour hustle show and now also being able to reform what 24 hour media is and what it actually means. Because originally the the concept was it, it was to be a digital marketing agency because one of my favorite mentors and motivators are Gary V. But yeah. I felt like, I felt like for me, that was kind of a little bit disingenuous of who I am. I don't necessarily like to create a lot of, stuff to, as far as marketing wise. I mean, I like it, but to do it as a job all the time, I don't know. I'd much rather make movies and do and work and work my creative mind in that space. So that's when I started to come up with the idea and kind of go back to my roots of doing, you know, film, talking about television and things like that. I thought that would be a place that would be a lot more authentic to who I am because I already love movies. And now being able to do the premieres and also be able to review them. Like there's also an idea that I have as far as like whenever we do do a premiere, maybe have a video as well of some of the audience members outside of the theater and say, hey, what did you think of the movie? What did you think of this thing? What did you think of that? What do you think is going to happen next? And post that up on YouTube with just like an audience oh, yeah. reaction. So Honestly, I, I just. Especially doing that around the premiere time. That's huge. I, we did oh, it with, I don't know if you, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, I was gonna, no, I was gonna say like it's just I, I just have so many ideas that I'm excited for 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 next year. It's gonna be really fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know if you checked out um, our sideline pictures YouTube channel. We started doing stuff like that, but uh, it just didn't. We weren't consistent with this, and we didn't keep it up. But when for the about a month that we did, our growth was like crazy. We have. Uh, two videos that got over 40,000 hits. We had a, mm. I went and saw Arrival the day Arrival came out and wrote and made this like little short video essay thing about Arrival, about the linguistic relativity concept in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that like blew up. I made a few hundred dollars off of just the YouTube ad revenue on that alone. Um, and then we did a bunch of other just like kind of little talk show type stuff about movie news. We'd go re- do reactions to whatever trailer was the newest trailer on IMDb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just kind of talk about that with our, you know, having the general knowledge about the film industry that we have uh, from that perspective. So I think if you can keep, if you can do that consistently, uh, and I think you can, you don't totally have the energy to it. There's, there's definitely a business in that. And I'm just super excited to, to, I mean, also just to consume some of that content too. Oh yeah. Um, 
Yeah, can, and uh, and just to add on that, consistency is definitely key. Like, if and and this was also a test of my endurance, of my consistency, my consistency, because being able to get 62 guests on the show and be able to do it weekly for as long as I had, and all that, can, and get, and be actually able to produce the content. Well, number one, shoot the show, get them on the show have marketing material put out every single week, have a newsletter and, and, and have it come out every single week at the same day and time is hard. But if yeah. you're able to <laughs> but if you're able to do it, it is super gratifying. It is it makes you feel good. And uh, I feel like this past year has definitely been a great test of that. And I'm excited to put that same endurance and test into this next project. All right, cool. Well, I uh, would like to shout out wherever you want me to. Uh, where's the website? What's your website that people can start checking out as you grow that TV content? But also, um, where can they connect with you on social media? So right now, the best place to hit me would be on my Facebook business page. So that's just 24 Hour Media. So it's 24 Hour which are both together and then space media, or you can actually find it putting in 24 hour media, 365. My page will come up. It has like a black and white logo. There's another 24 hour media out there, but that is not the right one. <laughs> so uh, I'm working on trying to create a distance from that other one, but um, that would be the best place to find me on there. I'm also, I also have my YouTube page. So for the personal one, it's youtube.com slash the freeze files. That's where the 24 Hour Hustle Show is. You can also find the show as well by just typing in 20, 24, well, hashtag 24 Hour Hustle, and then you'll be able to find it on there as well. I'm also on Instagram, so Anthony underscore Freeze. I'm also on Twitter, so Anthony underscore Freeze underscore. So, uh, and I'm also revamping my website. So hopefully by the time this episode comes out, so I know that website will be released. So it'll be 24hourmedia.net. Sweet. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, is there anything you want to leave the audience with before we go? Um, my, my number one thing is just, you know, find time to pursue your passion, associate with the right kind of people that are in life where you want to be consume this content for your mindset to be able to work on your attitude so that your actions are in, in, in the right place to be able to pursue the things that you want. So that would be the thing that I leave people with. And, and hopefully throughout this conversation that we've had, hopefully that it'll inspire and impact the people that are listening right now. Totally. Inspired me. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate you. Hey, thank you for watching or listening to that episode of Movies in the Black. I guess there's no way to watch because I'm not filming any of these yet. I do plan on filming these in the future, uh, but I'm kind of at that place where I am thinking about the minimal viable product. I just want to be making stuff and getting it out there. I'm all about that, and it's much easier and more realistic, especially right now while I'm on the road, to um, just be recording these. And I know some of them are phone conversations, and I obviously would love the quality to be better, but sometimes that's just the best way to get these people into the show. And I'd rather have a quality, interesting interview than pass it over just because I can't be sitting across the desk from them. That will hopefully continue to improve over time as I am going to make an effort to actually go to some of the people that I want to interview. And as you may know, I live in a pretty rural area. I travel quite a bit, but I live in a pretty rural area. So that gets kind of hard to uh, sit face to face with these people. So if you're liking the show, go ahead and give us some feedback. If you're on iTunes or Stitcher, a rating really helps us know how you're feeling about the show, but also it helps other people that may be considering listening but haven't started yet. And uh, comments on YouTube are super helpful. I try to respond to every single comment. You can always follow us on Facebook at Movies in the Black or check us out on the internet on our own site called MoviesintheBlack.com. There's actually a blog on there that has some other stuff like this really interesting distribution flowchart for self-distributed films. You might find that useful. There's also a functionality on there where you can subscribe to the blog and get emails every time I come out with a new blog post. So thank you for listening and I will be back in a week on Tuesday with another episode. Bye-bye.